Hey everyone, I'm Eric. Welcome back to another episode of the SDR Game Podcast. My guest today is Anon Gopinathan, Business Development Manager at Solid. Anon, great to have you here. Nice to meet you, man. And today I'm super excited about the topic we are going to cover because we are going to talk about how to get a sales tech job without sales experience. And Hanon, uh, Anon is here uh, to talk about this because that's uh, what he did actually. And um, we are going to do this episode for people who want to start their career in, in tech sales and uh, they don't have um, sales experience. So, but before we start, I want to introduce Anon because um, I think his, his background is interesting and what, and, and that's the reason also, uh, about why we are recording this episode. So he worked in central London he, as an investment analyst for three years, then left to be a cocktail bartender for two years. And then in 2019, he moved to Medellin, Colombia with three months worth of saving, no visa, no job and no Spanish. And actually, when I read that, and um, it reminded me when I moved to Mexico because um, I had like three or four months of saving and no visa and no job. Same, I moved there to be with my wife. So, uh, to be, yeah, I was my wife, my girlfriend that time, and then I came, became my wife. But same situation. Then you worked there as an English teacher. You broke into SaaS um, a year and a half ago, and then uh, you started as a CSM convinced the CEO to put you as a BDR and then became an AE. You called out Twitch, uh, your current CEO, and secured this new position. And now your mission is to bring FinTech to SaaS. Exactly, exactly. What's your process um, to find a sales job, uh, a tech sales job without sales experience? Yeah, so, yeah, I know this is definitely a topic that um, I'm interested in talking about. And I know currently with like the economic landscape and stuff, a lot of SDRs are kind of looking for work. So hoping to help out a lot of people here. Um, so, yeah, I guess my I have like a step by step process. And the whole process is based on replicating what you actually have to do as a BDR to actually get the job as a BDR. So like the beauty of it is it kind of transcends like resume, um, even sometimes like first round interviews, because you're already proving in the actual play, like what you the quality that you have the qualities to become a BDR. So um, okay, this could essentially be used by anyone, I just want to highlight. Um, and you can actually use it for other positions doesn't have to be a BDR, um, just for other sales positions in general. So I guess step one, um, would be taking advantage of Crunchbase. So first things first, you kind of want to look at companies you want to work for. And if it is in SaaS, you're obviously going to find them all on Crunchbase. The really cool thing about Crunchbase is you can actually filter them between how much ARR they're making, what industry they're in, whether they had a series A, a series B, how many employees. So if you're looking at joining a startup, you can filter out through like high flying startups. If you want to be in a slightly larger company that you know has kind of structures in place you can do that so step one would definitely be working through Crunchbase and actually compiling a list of companies so you want to get a good i would say 60 to 70 companies to start with that you're actually excited about number two i would take advantage of sales navigator so once you have the companies you want to find the decision maker so if you're in sales it's more than likely going to be the VP of sales, the CRO, or if it's a startup, potentially the CEO, um, because obviously they're going to have full autonomy on that decision. Now, after you've done that, you're going to have email address, phone number of these decision makers. So you're probably going to have around two to three decision makers for each company. So if you have, let's say, 60 companies, you're now going to have 120 contacts. Next step, this is probably the most important step, which is recording a 50 second video using Vidyard or Loom and essentially highlighting three or four reasons why you can have an immediate impact on the team. Now, why is this so important? Well, first of all, this just goes beyond a CV. Like they can actually see how you communicate, how you describe yourself, like the kind of energy that you have, which you just cannot read from, from a CV. 
Second of all, as a BDR, you're going to probably have to use these kind of creative prospecting methods anyway to catch attention. And I can tell you not a lot of people are doing it, especially in terms of getting a job. No one is sending a video. Um, I can tell you that from my experience with how people reacted to when I did it, that it's very, very uncommon. So with this video, you want to keep it as short as possible. The idea is to peak interest. You're not actually trying to impress this person and try and get a job. You just want to peak interest and show that you um, you have potentially something to offer and you're trying to get a conversation or a chat. So do your 40 second video. Again, simple introduction. Hi, my name's Anand. Um, I'm a BDR uh, or I'm looking for a BDR role. Here are four or five reasons why I can have an immediate impact on the team. Boom, 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 boom. Um, keep it as succinct as possible. I would not recommend going over 40 seconds just because it starts to get a bit long. I know people can get very uh, caught up in, in the whole video thing and start talking for a while. I wouldn't do that. I would try and keep it short, succinct, and impactful. Now, once you have your video, that's going to be, let's say, your first touch point. So you want to maybe have like two to three touch points after that, just in case the video, um, maybe they watch it, they're impressed, but they don't have time. Myself, personally, I went for a Venn diagram um, that's picked off Justin Michael's prospecting methods. Um, so I just had a simple Venn diagram with a picture of me in the middle, three circles, and it said SDR, account executive, and SDR team leader. And I just put different qualities to kind of just show through a visual, look, I can do all these three things um, and just kind of conveying value. Um, so I would include that visual. That's quite powerful because you don't have to just spend a lot of time explaining, oh, I did this, I did that, boom, it's a visual, it's processed in a few seconds, um, and away you go. And then the last touch point I had was um, just saying thoughts, question mark, um, in case they, uh, they haven't replied, um, it gets through those three touch points. So those are like your three main touch points. If you want, you can add a meme um, as your fourth touch point. I did do that um, just to kind of generate conversation, but you can get the idea is to get as creative as possible with it. Um, I can tell you most people are not outreaching decision makers. Um, most people right now as an SDR are kind of putting in online applications, crossing their fingers and just hoping for the best, which I guess worked before, but now because of the economy and stuff, it's like you have to be doing a little bit more. Um, so, okay, so now that you've got your outreach process and you have your contacts, it's literally, guys, just a case of, plugging in 20 prospects each day, um, that's going to start compounding on itself. And you want to follow up. So you have the phone numbers of these guys. If you're using an outreach software and you can see they're clicking on your video link, they've watched it, you need to ring them straight away. Um, ring them straight away. Once you call them, um, you can say, hey, um, this is Anand. Um, I just sent you an email. Does the name ring a bell? Uh, more likely than not, because not many people are sending videos, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, actually, uh, I just got your video. Boom. Perfect time to get feedback. Perfect time to handle any objections. Um, perfect time to say, look, does it make sense to uh, have a quick conversation um, and explore and see if there's any value we can bring each other? Um, so, yeah, those I would say are the main steps. I would say to be consistent with this. Like you want to be treating this as you would prospecting. This is what you're going to have to do as a BDR is getting attention from decision makers and trying to close a meeting as soon as possible. So once you've got the meeting, the really cool thing is you're almost kind of halfway there. Um, as long as you don't say anything, kinda, if you don't say anything to mess it up, um, most people are going to be very impressed by this. Um, I can tell you guys, I did this for two weeks. Um, I, I don't have the best qualifications. I don't have the best background. I don't have that much experience in SaaS, um, but I managed to secure uh, a, a position, a very competitive uh, position within two weeks. Um, and I can tell you guys, I had a, a very big list of people that wanted to talk to me. Um, and I actually had to tell them when I took this offer, look, I can't, uh, I really appreciate this. And, and that's a great position to be in guys. So I would say, just go through your sequence. Um, I've given you guys that playbook, try it out. I would say the video is kind of the foundation. If you can find three to four key reasons why you can have an impact. Again, you want to make this about them. It's not about you. You obviously want to say in the first line, 
hey, look, um, uh, I'm looking for a new BDR role. I saw you guys raised um, your new Series A, so you're probably looking to expand um, and drive more pipeline. I made a 30-second, 40-second video for you. Um, let me know if it's interesting. Boom. That's literally all you need to do for your first email. Uh, and then based off the back of that, stick to your sequence and you'll you'll start to see results coming in for sure. Well, so what I really like about what you mentioned here, it's treat your hiring process like uh, your job as an SDR. And here you really explain all the steps and that, yeah, pretty much the same process when you're an SDR. Can you hear me? I think it... I think yeah, I, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I think the connection was a bit... Yeah. Shoppy. Uh, let's let's go back to step number one. So you you are talking about Crunchbase. Uh, so you you mentioned let's start with your list. You use Crunchbase to create your list. Uh, so you mentioned the stage, the industry of the company, uh, the size of the company. Is, it, is there anything else that you are looking for when you are um, looking for a company or trying to find any relevant information that you want to use to I would say if I qualify the company you want to work for. I'll... Exactly. Yeah. I would say one thing, um, again, tied into the future. If you're looking for a new role, you obviously, I mean, everyone wants runway, right? We don't want to join a company and then two, three months kind of running into financial trouble. And, and then it's like, okay, yeah, we, we're, we're going to have to let you go now. So look for companies with um, financial strength. You, you can kind of check that out on Crunchbase just by seeing um, whether their employees have grown or not in the past few months, um, whether they've maybe let go uh, of a few people. That's going to kind of give you an indicator. Beyond that, obviously, there's personal preferences. I know a lot of people like companies that have raised a, a nice fat Series A or Series B, um, or maybe you just want to work at a smaller company. Some people prefer the startup vibe. Other people kind of prefer... Um, like a mid-market kind of company. So I would say, yeah, a lot of it depends on personal preferences, but I would say the key one is financial strength. You obviously want to be applying for companies that you know have a, have a future going into 2023. Now that's the financial strength. It's the really good point because, for example, right now I'm working at Chili Piper. Uh, we uh, raised money three times already at the company. In my previous job, that was um, a bootstrap company. And when the pandemic happened two years ago, the, we lost three customers. And I knew that at this moment, the company is going to struggle because if you are losing three big customers and you don't have any, if you didn't raise any money, it means that they were, we are going to need to cut cost. And what happened, the, um, so I started looking um, for another job. So, and I find a cheap paper. And the day I left the company, they, Unfortunately, they fired like six person. And now, obviously, if I, I'm actually paper, it's the situation is different, but I definitely that's a really good point, the financial straight. You timed it perfectly there. You, you know what's coming if uh, yeah. you are going to the street customer. So. Then uh, I think, yeah, the other point you mentioned about the growth of the company is, yeah, same here. Uh, I know, for example, when I was looking for chili pepper, I checked on Cessnav. I saw the growth in the past two years, and they were growing like by 100, 150%. So I know the company was growing. And uh, on top of what you mentioned also, the I think there is a couple of things also I'm going to check uh, because the growth of the company, uh, we already talked about it, but I think why it's important is it's because for you also as a person in your sales career is going to help you. Because if the company is growing, you are still going to grow with the company at the same time. And for your career, it's really like a really good move to join a company that grow that that's going to grow. The second step, for example, on top of that, I'm sorry, second step. Another point that you can check is the founders. Uh, for example, for Chili Piper, when I joined Chili Piper, the I was checking the other two founders, and I checked their previous experience. And I know the CEO has um, a lot of sales experience and I know it's going to to understand sales because obviously working and I'm saying you, you can't work for a CEO who has a, a, an engineering background or something like that but I would say, um, if you think about working for a CEO with a sales background is going to understand sales and that's something I knew that I wanted to do. 
And uh, yeah, and the, the last point is the sales culture also. Uh, something, yeah, the CEO is one, but then also uh, I was, like you were mentioning, when you are doing your research about the decision makers, the people you are going to offer also is trying to see their um, a view, further view, their perspective about sales, and you want to make sure also you are going to work with people you want to, to go with. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the beauty of, of doing the outreach right by yourself like you you choose it's not like oh what's available right now you can actually look and see look i actually get excited like looking at this company and thinking i want to work for them so just go out and get it and like with the playbook like it's it's not coming across you're doing things that are so unique and different that it can open up roles for you that didn't necessarily exist for other people which is like a surefire route to just get straight into the party. I think it, it kind of brings back Elrica kind of, um, I, I was reading somewhere about um, uh, being in college and trying to get into uh, a, a party. There's two ways to get into the party. You can take the main door or you can take the side door. Um, the, 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 the good thing about the side door is you, it, it's risky. Not a lot of people are doing it, but you can 100% get in through the side door. With the main door, you're probably gonna have to wait in the queue. Only a set amount of people get in um, and, and they're probably just gonna say no because there's so many people there. The way that like this playbook is kind of going through the side door, um, you're opening up opportunities that, that just aren't there for, for the majority of the people, so. We are talking about here the step two, if I'm talking about the reaching out to the decision makers. And then like you mentioned, it's how you are just applying and waiting to get a reply back from them. But what I, I like about what you are currently saying is because I, I'm taking the perspective here of uh, a hiring manager here at Chili Pepper. And for example, he, right now, uh, sometimes when we are opening roles at Chili Pepper, we will get like 300 or 400 candidates just for one position. And if everyone just do what they're supposed to do, well, it's first first self and uh, the the first person we're going for the sorry, the first person that's going to apply that's the first person we are going to to interview and if you are maybe number th uh, 300 maybe yes you would get a reply but may maybe a week later and if you do like you said a standing a video uh, for us for example for, i'm not saying uh, at the stage we are right now i think you need to apply yourself but on top of that doing what you mentioned the sending the video and then doing your uh, your outreach but doing this video is going to to help stand out as i have a question for you then eric as a, as a hiring manager how would you wh how would it affect you or what would your perspective be if you received an online application and then you received a cold email from someone sending you like a 30 40 second video uh, and outreaching you in that way. But definitely you will stand out because maybe we have one for, for, for example, if we have, we have 100 candidates, we maybe have one person doing that actually. There you go, guys. That that just says it yeah. all. Like one, be one out of 100. <laughs> if you think that you are competing against 300, 400 people just for this role, it's yeah, what I can do to stand out. Because if, you are just waiting that we'll that we'll reply to your application. Yeah, we, we will we will, but maybe in the pipeline we have people who maybe have more experience or you if you know that, but like you mentioned, you didn't have like the experience, but just by doing this process, it shows that you are hungry and that you want to to get into Texas. And and I am sure most BDRs know this, but if you're not a BDR and you're trying to get into BDR, um you, you will learn this along the way, which is at the end of the day, if you're going to outreach, you have to solve a problem. So what you have to think if you're VP of sales or your CRO or your CEO in today's climate, what's the main problem these guys are thinking? And the main problem more often than not is they need to be put in front of more qualified buyers. Like it's a tough marketplace right now. They need hungry SDRs that are going to build pipeline. Um, so I would use that in your sequence, understanding that and, and positioning yourself as the solution to that. Um, and you're doing it in like a kind of subconscious way, right? You're showing through your outreach that you can get attention. And if you can get attention from a VP of sales or a CRO, you're probably going to be able to get attention from a decision maker 
um, in the ICP of that company. So it kind of works from so many angles, labels. And I have some questions about the, the video you mentioned. So step number yeah. three, you mentioned that we need to record the video. So the intro, and I'm going to, I'm asking you that because to be really specific, because we said uh, here the intro, but then here three, four reasons. Um, so how do you structure? So you have the intro and then the three, four reasons. So what, for example, what reason you can you include in your video? Yeah, so the first one, obviously introduce yourself. Um, just keep that really short because quite frankly, they, they, they don't really care. Like that's just, just you being polite. You want to make the bulk of it how you can make an impact. So for me personally, um, I did have some experience. Um, if you don't have experience, you do have experience because you can kind of turn this, something that you've done in the past can be transferred into sales. So whether it be you've um you've you've sold something that may not be SaaS. uh maybe you've um outreached someone in a certain way there's so many things you can say me personally just for an example um i i, I was hired as a bdr with no sales experience and then i was promoted to an ae within a very short period of time so i mentioned that in my first um, few months as ae i was very fortunate enough to close um, a, a sizable deal. So I also mentioned that um, and anything unique about you, right? So my my background and my story is different. Obviously, Elra, you can kind of um, relate to that. But just the fact that I came to Medellin with nothing kind of and 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 broke into SaaS in Medellin is just unusual. Um, so it catches people's attention. So I also included that and said, look, um, my, my, my story is quite unique. I came to Medellin with nothing. And then I used it to translate into how that makes me a good salesperson. So look, all the skills I needed to survive in Medellin are skills that make me a good sales rep, building relationships, um, problem solving, things like that. So you, ev there's, there's things that you've done or you've gone through in life that can very easily translate into you being a good sales rep. You just have to dig a little bit deeper and find out what those things are. Um, but yeah, those are some examples that you guys can can kind of use um, in that. Again, I would keep it short, keep it short, succinct. Again, this person is watching the video thinking, how does this help me? How can this person benefit me? So have that in your mind as you're doing the video. Yeah, and when you said a short thing or so, I think it applies to when you're prospecting because if you think about doing a two, three minutes videos and that your prospects are going to share that the same. So the the reason you mentioned, uh, I think that's a really good point because you can definitely look for past experience. Like you said, maybe you don't have such experience, but maybe at school, you, are, you work on a project that's related to sales. Maybe at that time you think it was not related, but that's something. For example, and I didn't use that, but now you are saying that. For example, in uh, first year of uni, I was, I did an internship uh, as a telemarketer. So for example, I, I never used that actually, but that's something I could use. So because it's, I was doing 150 calls per day, for example, during this internship. So, and it was cold calls. So, <laughs> but that's something you can use. Uh, then I know, so I, I've seen some candidates that um, they, they were playing video games, uh, Comp they were doing competition, for example, and, and they are really competitive per, uh, person, and that's something for sales, obviously, uh, for, as a state point of a hiring manager, you want people who are really competitive, that competitive with their sense that they want to improve. And, um, but yeah, uh, so that was the three, four reasons you can mention. What do you say at the end of the video? Do you have a call to action or what do you say? Yeah, so normally at the end, I'll say, look, um, if, if you think, uh, if, if this is something, if this, if I could potentially, if this could potentially be valuable to you, um, let me know, take care and be well. Um, you just want to keep it succinct, short. Obviously, you're going up to some quite high up people. Um, so um, just, just get to the point, like be direct. No need to give like your whole life story. Just how can you make an impact? Why are you valuable to them? And why do they need to sit down and have a conversation with you? And remember, the goal is not like I think with your CV, you're kind of given your whole story. Um, you're giving all accomplishments. That's not really the goal here. Your goal is to just get attention and pique their interest. That's it. Um, and the, 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 the less you can kind of say um, and the more impactful it is, the more, more likely you're going to do that. Do you 
have personalized videos for each company or do you kind of use the same video for uh, all your applications? Depends. If I really, really like the company or there's something that stands out to me, um, I will definitely try and do like uh, something a tiny bit unique. Generally speaking, though, I put the personalization in the cold email. Um, so the video is is essentially the same video, but the the cold email, I'll, I'll highlight something personal that I noticed or whatever drew my attention to that company and, and why I've decided to reach out. Even though it's the same for everyone, but I think it's still good because you are still relevant to this specific company. So, Okay, so and step four, the Venn diagram. Um, that's something we are using in our Twitch, but never think about using the Venn diagram in, in when you are looking for a job. So, uh, Venn diagram is powerful, man. Venn, Venn diagram is really powerful. And, and if any of you are watching, I would recommend, um, I'm sure you got it from Justin Michael, right? The, the Venn diagram, yeah. It's so powerful. And, and he says, why? Because an image can be processed um, within seconds. Like the, sa the same thing that you have to put in a Venn diagram, if you wrote that, would take like significantly longer to process. The brain doesn't even want to do it because it's just a large chunk of text. With a Venn diagram, it's very powerful. And I actually got on my second touch points with the Venn diagram, a few more replies um, after the video. It just gives it that other edge. So yeah, 100% recommend the Venn diagram for anyone out there. I forgot to mention also when we are talking about when you're sending, how do you say the, when I started my career in, in Texas because I was working for IT services companies in Mexico City. And then uh, I don't know how, but I came up talking to a sales manager at Zendesk and he coached me uh, to write my CV for applying for my first BDR role. And something that's also I re definitely recommend is, for example, if you have questions, talk to Anon, for example, or, or with me, because we can still like, give you some tips around your CV, because the CV is also, for, for me, here at Chili the first step is the hiring team, and the hiring team is going to, uh, they are the first feature, so definitely that's something you, you can leverage. But this person actually helped me and coached me on around the world I need to use on my CV. And I think I wouldn't get the job without him because uh, I was not showing the result, for example, in my previous experience. I was not using specific language that a hiring manager or a hiring team is going to check. So if obviously you are thinking about that, that's something you, you, you should consider. Yeah, especially for the CV, I would say it's 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 all impact based like people just want to know what impact you've had and quantify that impact it I, I see like quite a few people kind of like saying oh i'm responsible for this i do this and i mean that's okay it does definitely gives information on what you're doing but it would be a lot more powerful to someone reading it if it kind of said look um during my time here i closed x amount of deals um and i built so much in pipeline whether it be a sales job or not a sales a sales job, I would say focus on the results, the outcome um, that happened of, of whatever it is that you were doing. Going back on what, around what you're saying, for example, your experience in Medellin when you, you, you came there, that's something you can definitely leverage that and say, the, here's what I did and here's the impact of, of doing it. Yeah, you don't need to come to, to Medellin, guys, to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to break into SaaS. There's other ways of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you get the, the attention of the hiring manager or the VP of sales, but depending on the person. So what do you do for your first interview, before your first interview? I mean, I kind of, with interviews, I love interviews, just mainly because um, I'm, I'm like a former AE, right? So I just treat it like a discovery call. Um, so with my interviews, I'm trying to very quickly find out what their objective is. Not in terms of why they're meeting me or whatever, but let's say they meet you. Let's say the VP of sales meets you. He's meeting you for a reason. Like he, he, he's interested because he thinks you can do something for him. It's your job in the interview to find out exactly what that thing is. So for one example, when I spoke with my current CEO, I tried to uncover what, what, what is the goal that he's trying to get to. So I said, um, I said to him, look, like what, 
um, w w what's the mission here? Like, uh, or, or here's what I'd do. I'd start firstly by finding out what caught their attention. So I'd say, look, I, I mean, you decided to meet me today. What was it about my video that stood out? Now, they're probably going to say, oh, I mean, it was different. I don't usually get things like that. I mean, you're obviously um, very good at outreach and so on and so forth. So then you want to find out where are they trying to get to, um, whether it be a certain amount in ARR, whether it be more qualified meetings. You want to find out very quickly where are you right now and where are you hoping to get to? Because once you know that, you can align yourself to that. So let's say um, he says, well, look, yeah, I want to sit down with you, Elric, because um, I mean, our whole goal is we're trying to we're trying to add 10 more qualified meetings uh, weekly. Boom. You have that now. So you can attach yourself to that and you can say, oh, look, well, I think I can uh, I can help you get there because of A, B, C and D. Now, you've already got his attention. So it's not going to be that difficult to to show him that you're capable of doing that because you've outreached someone that's potentially very difficult to outreach. Um, so I would say, number one, find out what it is that they're trying to do. Number two, you want to ask this person on the call what risks they see in hiring you. Why? Because you don't want to have a call and then it goes well and then you just don't hear anything back from them. That's just a waste of time and it's going to be very difficult to get that person back on again. So you want to kind of be pushing this call. So you want to say, look, um, after you've gone through that, I mean, Elric, what kind of risks would you see um, in, in, in potentially hiring me? And you're going to get all the information. They're going to share their doubts. They're going to say, look, I mean, you're all the way in Medellin. I don't know like, if, if that's going to work. That kind of gives us problems. Okay, good. Note that down. You have that objection. Um, and you should have probably planned these before you hop on this call. And you want to provide a solution for any of these objections. Now, once you've done that, now you can go in and start pressing even harder. So sometimes I went on calls and I said, look, I don't actually see any any risks, risks, boom, go in and push this further and say, look, like, could you, could you potentially, do you think I can help get you 10 qualified meetings extra per week? Yeah, I can. I actually couldn't see you doing that. I, okay. I mean, does it make sense? What would you suggest to the next steps? Um, does it make sense in getting a written offer sent out right now? Um, ask these questions because these are questions Every salesperson is going to respect you for asking these questions. You may feel you're being direct, but at the end of the day, you're being assertive. And that is the most important quality in a sales rep. And they will respect you. They may even laugh a little bit because they know what you're doing. Um, but that's the best way that you, you want to direct this conversation into a place where you kind of have control over it. Um, and you can kind of, you can kind of, play chess with them to a point where it's like, oh, I mean, logically, we, I, we, we should just give this guy a job. Like he's answered, he's, there's no risks here. He's outreached me. He's shown everything he needs to do. Um, so I would say those three questions will, will definitely help move that along for sure. And what do you say when they say, hey, you are living in Medellin? Because you say that's yeah. one of your objections. So what do you say? Yeah, that was a huge one for me. So, I mean, most of you watching this are, are probably applying for jobs in your own country. For me, it was a lot harder because I was applying from managing Colombia. Like, who, who, like, I mean, it is picking up, but it's kind of unusual, right? So, fortunately for me, I had solutions to this. So, there's companies like Deal um, uh, uh, and other companies where you can just hire people abroad very, very quickly in a legally compliant way. Um, so that was my kind of uh, solution to that. I had a lot of people that would brush me off and say, look, yeah, we just don't hire outside of, of the US for tax reasons. Now, if you do get something like that, understand that's an objection and try and uncover it. Um, so for me, I said, I, I kept getting that objection a lot. So I had a response for that, which, which would be, I mean, okay, so I would say, Elric, okay, yeah, I mean, that's fair. What would need to happen for you to consider hiring someone outside the US? So that way you open it up to them. Um, and they may say, look, I mean, if this person was bringing in 10 meetings a week, I don't even care where they are. Or, or, or they may say, look, I mean, it's mainly because our CEO is not happy with it and he hasn't given me an approval. Boom, go to the CEO. Um, I'll reach the CEO. You know the decision maker there. He's the guy you want to you want to kind of convince that this is a, a feasible option. So there's various ways of doing it. 
I would say if you plan your objections beforehand, everyone's, you're all going to know what is something about you that an employer might have a potential doubt about. You need to be on the ball about those. So when you are on the call or you are in an interview, provide a solution straight away um, and, and show that it's not actually as big an issue as you think. Like you say, it's you're playing chess with them. And so you know what you're going to answer for everything. And yeah, the, and also you are giving them the solution for the operation because they say, yeah, you are Medellin and yeah, we, we can't hire someone in Medellin. Yeah, but I have, I might recommend a solution for this. And I mean, and yeah, it's getting back to what you said at the beginning, treat the hiring process as a billiard process, but also if you want to go further on that, it's yeah, as a sets process, because here you, you today on the episode, you, you mentioned your, your way of prospecting to specific companies, the company you want to work for. But then also the the hiring process for the the interviews you are managing them also like the sex process, you are you you try to understand what they are look, what they want to achieve with you, and then when you get objections you have their concerns, but then you find the solutions to to get to the yes and then get the offer. Yeah, and I mean once you do it, it not only do you feel you, you, once you've outreached your your BDR role. You're not going into your BDR role like, oh, like I'm kind of nervous. What if I don't do well? Like you've already done it to get there. So it's like such a big confidence boost for you in terms of like, oh, I really believe I can hit the ground running now. Um, I already outreached this job. So it just there's so many benefits, man, um, from doing it this way uh, that I'm hoping everyone listening can just kind of use this uh, and run with it. If, you, if you're really struggling, I see. Eric, man, I see when I'm jumping in on LinkedIn, I see so many people are struggling. I know some really top SDRs that 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 have been looking for a while. Um, and 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 I mean, if you take this route, I honestly, my personal opinion, if you stick to the play, two weeks, man. Within two weeks, you should have at least like a, a couple of rounds of interviews. So you're gonna get the attention of someone. Um, just be consistent. Add 10 to 15 prospects per day. Um, and you're going to see results. It's, it's just a matter of time. On top of what we talk about during the episode, what advice would you give to a smart and driven new SDR or someone who wants to start in tech sales? And what advice should, should they ignore? Yeah, so the advice, if you're driven, I would say, number one, start posting on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is, is big for a number of reasons. First of all, you're going to learn a lot. Um, when you're posting, you're going to attract other salespeople, connect with other salespeople. And some of the information I've found on LinkedIn has actually helped me in my own outreach and for sure had like a direct monetary effect or result um, for me. So posting on LinkedIn is huge. Um, secondly, if you are posting on LinkedIn, when you're doing your outreach, you're going to start like creating attention from like these people that you're outreaching, they're going to look you up on LinkedIn. Or if you send them a request whilst part of your sequence, they're going to look you up. If you've got content on there that's talking about sales, giving an insight into how you think, it's like they, it's like your CV almost, but in a more casual way. And they can see, oh, okay, this person thinks like this. Um, and then before they've even met you, they have an idea of how competent you are as a salesperson um, the kind of value you might be able to offer. So leverage that, like that's that's very powerful. Um, I would also say if you're a smart and driven new BDR, um, take action. I know you can read a lot. Um, there's loads of like useful resources, but I think nothing really beats just like picking up the phone and, and calling someone or, or cold emailing someone. Whether or not you get shot down and it's painful for you, you're going to learn from that and it's just getting your reps in like it's it's following like the Malcolm Gladwell kind of theory that you have to put in the hours um, and when you put in the hours that's the only way you can achieve mastery and and if you're in this and you're smart and driven I know that you want mastery that's what we all want we all want to be a master we all want to dedicate ourselves to this craft and become as good as we can at it some advice that I'd say potentially to ignore would be um, activity metrics. I know people are kind of controversial on this. Myself personally, I'm not a fan of just like spamming and be like, okay, like I've done 50 calls today. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like I'm just gonna sit back and and relax. Like 
try and be very results focused. And it ties back into what I was saying about uh, mentioning with your CV and impact is 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 your value. Like the, the impact you can have is your value, whether or not you're reaching out to 100 contacts or 20 contacts, like try and be strategic with it. Like you, you don't want to kind of just spray and pray. You you want to really analyze, like what is this specific person's problem? Like what? How how is my solution solving this specific problem and what specific way is it solving the solution? Um, I would also say just be creative and strategic, have fun with it. Like the, the video on the Venn diagram is just an example. Like it's not, it's business. Yeah. But it's not like people are human beings. Like they don't want to read like a huge boring. I mean, Elric, like, how do you feel when you have to go through CVs? Is it like fun? Like, do you enjoy it? Do you have like a specific way to get through it? Um, yeah, I'm looking at specific things on the on the CV, uh, the previous experience, the type of company that they were looking for, the impact that they shown on on the on the CV. So, but generally for me, I'm more into the second stage of the hiring process. So normally the the hiring, the the recruiter on our team uh, generally she or he already uh, did like the first uh, screen on this. And so on my side, I'm more looking to the previous experience and something I can ask during the, the interview. Uh, so, so yeah, the, like you mentioned, the impact in this, and if they didn't mention it, I'm going to ask it during the interview. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, just be creative. Um, I'm not, I'm not afraid of a meme every now and then. So if you do want to include a meme, a creative meme, um, go for it. The idea is getting attention. Um, and I'm sure Elric, you know, this, like, as, as be, uh, the, if you can get attention, we live in an attention-based economy right now. The, the biggest currency is attention. If you can get attention, there's so many things going on that people are just distracted or they're just like, I, I don't have time for this. If you can get attention really quickly, that's not only going to serve you incredibly in being a BDR. If you want to start a new, new, new company, if you want to get a job like in whatever, whether it's a recession or whatever, with that skill, it's just going to be so, so powerful to you. Um, so I would say understanding that as, as a smart and driven BDR um, will take you very far in, in a very short amount of time, for sure. Well, and um, it was a great conversation and a fun conversation. Thank you for taking the time today uh, to be here on the podcast. Uh, but before we finish the episode, um, is there anything else you want to share with the audience or any closing comments that you want to yeah share with the audience yeah so i would like to say to everyone out there like i feel your pain like i was also in the same situation um and 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 it's tough right um it's very easy to get like despondent think like oh this is just not going to work out for me um but if you stick to a strategic um play if you focus on the problems that you can solve for other people, you're going to do well. Like that's, that's literally all it is. Just stay consistent, focus on the problems you can solve. And I guarantee you, you will definitely manifest some sort of opportunity 100%. And I'm really hoping um, that this can actually do that for people. If anyone wants to reach out to me personally, like maybe just to review a video, ask me a couple of questions. Um, you can uh, tap into me through my LinkedIn. Uh, it's uh, Anand Gopanathan, more than happy to help people. Um, but yeah, just go out there, get it. If you have something that you want to do, there's no reason why you can't do it. Um, and just be captain of your own ship, man. Just go out there. If you want it, get it. Don't wait for someone else to bring it to you. Um, and you're going to do really, really well in sales with that mindset. That's it. Anand, thank you so much for today. It was nice to see you. And thanks everyone for listening to this episode. Thanks, guys.